David become king. Now this is Second of Samuel chapter five. So Saul has hated David, persecuted him, so God said that Saul wasn't going to be the king and he'd found David, a man after his own heart. So Saul was killed in battle and David did the right thing when he had the chance to kill Saul. He didn't, he trusted in God. And so, true enough, David became king, but first of all he was just king of Judah because some people, led by Abner, were supporting King Saul, even after King Saul was dead, and they didn't want David. But bit by bit, all of Israel came to love David, and all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron, and they said, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. In other words, we are one with you. Now, that is said about us and Jesus, that we are his bones and his flesh. What that means is that when we're baptised into Jesus, we're baptised into what Paul calls the body of Christ. And we are very, very closely related with Jesus. So don't think that Jesus is up in heaven sort of far away. When we're baptised into Jesus, we are very, very closely involved with him. He's not just sitting there waiting to come back, looking at the clock. He's really, really active. Jesus is real. He's really, really actively involved in our lives. So, David was a bit like Jesus, really, and all the people of Israel came to David and said, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. In the past, when Saul was king over us, it was you who really led Israel. And God said to you, You will be my shepherd of my people Israel, and you will be prince over Israel. Well, David was literally a shepherd, wasn't he? And he was very brave in killing the lion and the bear when they came to attack his, his sheep. And so that experience prepared him to be a shepherd over Israel. And you see the same with Moses. For 40 years he was a, 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 a shepherd in the desert. And he led sheep around in the desert. And for 40 years that's what he did to the people of Israel. So you go through one experience in your life to prepare you for another one. And it's all in the hands of a loving God who seeks to do us good at our latter end. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron and King David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. Now of course Samuel had already done that years ago but Samuel was dead now. You remember how he went to Jesse and didn't want to anoint any of David's fine older brothers, but he anointed just little David, as it were. And so now Israel accept what Samuel did and what God had done, and they anoint David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years over all Israel and Judah. The king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land. So, in those days, Jerusalem didn't belong to the Israelites. Now, it did in the time of Joshua, but what had happened was that they had allowed these local tribes to come and take over because they had not followed up on what Joshua had done. And that's the problem with us. If we allow a bit of sin, a bit of weakness in our lives, it just comes back to bite us later. And these Jebusites, the people who lived in Jerusalem, teased David. And they said that unless you take away the blind and the lame, you shall not come in here, thinking David can't come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, which is the city of David. David had said, whoever strikes a Jebusite, let him get up to the watercourse, that is, climb up the gutter, and strike him and the blind. In other words, the Jebusites were saying, even if we weren't here and only lame and blind people amongst us were defending this city, just the lame and the blind could defend it. Lame is people who can't walk. And that's why they made a law afterwards that the blind and the lame couldn't come in to the house of God. So David lived in the stronghold and called it the city of David. 
And David grew greater and greater, for Yahweh, the God of armies, was with him. Now, when you read that God is the God of hosts or of armies, it means that he's got armies and armies of angels up there in heaven who are doing his will. And we should not fear any little human army. Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David and cedar trees and carpenters and masons, and they built David a house. David realized that the Lord had established him as king over Israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. So he realized that this wasn't because he was a good man, but it was because God loved Israel. David took him more wives out of Jerusalem, and he had even more sons and daughters born to him. It was God's intention that there should be one man and one woman. So how many wives did he have all together? Well, I'm not sure we can work it out, but probably at least ten of them. Now, and probably more than that. Now, God made Adam and he made Eve. He didn't make one Adam and two or three or ten women. It was God's intention that there should be one man and one woman. And the fact that there are more or less the same number of men as there are women in the world's population, that shows that that was more or less God's intention. So, as it's called polygamy, that is a man having lots of wives, is not what God wants. But you see that God still worked through David, even though he was weak. But the problem is that the weakness of David passed on to his son Solomon, who had a thousand wives. So, that's the trouble. Once you allow a bit of sin into your life, then it gets worse and worse. That's why later on, despite him being allowed to have all these wives, David still goes and kills Uriah because he wants Bathsheba to be his wife. So, if we give in to the flesh, we don't actually satisfy ourselves. Now, the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over Israel. And they came out to battle against him. Because, of course, just recently, before Saul had died, um, <clears throat> this is going back now for seven years or so, he had lived with them. Just seven years ago, he'd been living with them. In, uh, in Gath. And he was friends with their king, King Achish. So they must have really been annoyed that now he sort of uh, apparently turned against them. David asked the Lord, saying, Should I go up and fight the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said, Go up, for I will certainly deliver them into your hand. So whatever we do, we should be asking for God's guidance. So David came to Baal Perazim, and David struck them there. And he said, The Lord has broken my enemies before me, like a breach of waters. So then God gave him the victory. And all the time he recognizes, God gave me the victory. And that's so important. The Philistines left their images there, their idols, and David and his men took them away. The Philistines came up again into the valley of Rephaim, and again David asked the Lord. But this time the Lord said, You shall not go up. Circle around behind them and attack them opposite the mulberry trees. This was a test of David's experience. So he shouldn't just think, ah, oh, God was with me then, he'd be, be with me every time. No, we should never presume upon God helping us. And God said, it shall be when you hear the sound of marching above the mulberry trees, that then you will stir yourself up because the Lord has gone out before you. And you must then go and attack. And David did so. And he struck the Philistines. So, I think that sound of marching was the sound of the angels. Maybe what are called the cherubim. So David was being shown that he was to only go forward when the angels were, as it were, on top of him, above him. I would be thinking... Jesus would be coming back. Yes, and of course Jesus didn't exist in the time of David. So he would have understood this sound of marching as, as of the angels. 
And there's a verse where Paul says, if we live in the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And I think the idea is that we are to follow where God leads us, just like the Israelites in the in the wilderness. They followed the angel. And that's really important, that we have a sense that we are following where we are being led.